हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स एस्टी कॉलरीज सैम्यूअल टेलर कॉलरीज हैज बीन कंसीडर्ड एज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट लिटररी पर्सनैलिटी ड्यूरिंग द पीरियड ऑफ रोमेंटिक रिवाइवल इन टूडेज वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिटिकली एनालाइज कॉल रीज एज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट रोमेंटिक पोएट वी आर गोइंग टू एग्जामिन कॉल रीज एज अ पोएट ऑफ सुपर नेचुरलिज्म सो नाउ लेट्स बिगिन फ्रेंड्स बट बिफोर दैट आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल माई व्यूअर्स टू प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन सो दैट वेन एवर आई अपलोड अ न्यू वीडियो यू माइट गैट द नोटिफिकेशन फ्रेंड्स कॉल रीज who was born in 1772 and died in 1834 is considered as the founding pillar as the most important founding member okay of the period of romantic revival many critics call him as the most complete representative poet of the period of romantic revival in the beginning of the 19th century critics and scholars also consider kaldige as the poet of supernaturalism why because his poetry is full of supernatural elements now the question is you know before we examine the poetry of kaldige and before we examine the element of romanticism in his poetry we must have a look at the major poetical works written by samuel taylor coleridge okay so the most important work most important romantic poetry written by coleridge that comes to us first is the rhyme of the ancient mariner christabel kubla khan ord to dejection three graves and frost at midnight these are some very important and influential works poetical works written by samuel taylor coleridge now friends we are going to examine coleridge as a poet of supernaturalism as a poet of romanticism but before that you need to understand what this term romanticism is friends remember the term romanticism actually comes from the uh, actually origins from the word uh, french word romant r o m a u n t romant means the stories told love stories told in the form of poetry okay and that's why the poetry which was written during that period of romantic revival is entitled as romantic poetry okay now generally the students have some misunderstanding about the word romanticism they believe that romanticism means the love between man and women but friends okay fine you are right but this is not enough okay this is not the only meaning of the word romanticism okay romanticism includes anything which excites you which appeals your emotions which brings about a thrilling experience in your life these all things are called romanticism so love for past nature some natural scenes and scenery adventure okay all these things are also included in romanticism as far as literature is concerned many critics have given different definitions of romanticism like walter pater an important 19th century critic victorian critic he said that romanticism is the addition of strangeness to beauty so romanticism is mainly concerned with beauty okay and the element of strangeness is added to beauty and that makes something romantic according to the victorian critic walter pater okay some other critic has also very nicely summarized 
द रोमांटिक रोमांटिसिज्म ही सेज दैट वन पॉयट इज रोमांटिक बिकॉज ही फॉल्स इन लव रिमेंबर जॉन कीट्स द पोएट ऑफ लव अनदर रोमांटिक पोएट यू नो इज कॉल्ड रोमांटिक बिकॉज ही सीज अ गॉस्ट डिविल्स विच इज रिमेंबर एस टी कॉल्ड इज द पोएट ऑफ सुपर नेचुरलिज्म अनदर रोमांटिक पोएट is romantic because he hears the kaku remember william wordsworth the poet of nature and another romantic poet becomes romantic why because he is reconciled to the church remember p b shelley so in this words you know this critic has summarized the works of four great romantic poets john keats the poet of love William Wordsworth the poet of nature Astley College the poet of supernaturalism and P B Shelley the poet of revolutionary ideas John Keats who himself was an important romantic poet has also said very important line about romanticism if you ask John Keats what this romanticism is and then he says that if poetry comes not as naturally as leaves to a tree it had better not come at all means john keats wants to say that poetry must come to the poet as naturally as leaves come to a tree so the element of spontaneity okay uh, automatic or the poetry must come naturally without efforts that is true poetry and that is true romantic poetry according to john keats so all in all if you summarize all different definitions given by different critics and scholars then you can say that romanticism means imagination it means strangeness adding of strangeness uh, to beauty supernatural elements love for nature love for past lyricism all these combine to make romantic poetry so friends now let's try to examine the poetry of samuel taylor coleridge and see why and how coleridge has been considered as the most important romantic poet of english literature before that uh, let me tell you we are going to uh, i am going to present this point wise the first important element that you find in his poetry is the element of mystery okay taylor a critic of english literature has said that the very center of coleridge's poetry lies in his faculty of evoking the mystery of things according to taylor coleridge's poetry has the capacity to evoke some mystery mysterious uh, element mysterious atmosphere in his poetry you know he has created mysterious atmosphere in the ancient mariner an important poetry and cristobal also even some natural scenes such as if you examine his poetry there is an there is a scene of a sunrise twinkling stars blowing of winds okay the rise of the moon all these things natural scenes are presented in a very mysterious ways by astley college in his poetry uh, let me give you this example you know college writes in this these are the words of college what if you slept and what if you sleep and you dream man lo aap so jate hai aur aap sapna sapna dekhte hain right and uh, what if you slept and what if you sleep and you dreamed and what if you dream you went to heaven okay आप सपने में स्वर्ग में चले जाते हैं एंड देन यू प्लग्ड अ स्ट्रेंज एंड ब्यूटीफुल फ्लावर फ्रॉम द हेवन एंड व्हाट इफ यू अवोक ओके आप नींद में से जाग जाते हैं एंड देन यू हैड दैट फ्लावर इन योर हैंड एंड 
ah what then this is mystery okay because you were in the dream it is a dream and in dream you plucked a flower from the heaven but when you in real life when you awoke in the morning early in the morning you have the same flower in your hand this is mystery right so coleridge is you know fond of creating such mystery uh, mysteries in his poems another important element that we find in coleridge poetry is his strong power of emo, uh, of imagination it is by his power of imagination that coleridge has coleridge produces the willing suspension of disbelief this phrase has been coined by john keats okay in his poetry his imagination takes us in very distant far off places places right he creates some pleasing very pleasing imaginative pictures of the sea of the ship of the albatross the bird okay this is the name of the bird uh, presented by college in the poetry rhyme of the ancient mariner he also creates some imaginative scenes of the medieval castles okay and he uh, by creating all such medieval atmosphere he wraps the readers in the atmosphere of wonder look at these lines day after day after day after day we stuck no breathe no motion as idle as a painted sheep upon a painted ocean you know he creates pictures with the help of his imagination he imagines himself as a painted sheep okay no breathe and no motion almost dad okay so he compares the people with the painted ships upon a painted ocean so with imagination with the help of his power of imagination he is able to create such beautiful pictures visual pictures in the eyes of the readers but the most important element in college poetry that we find is his supernaturalism supernaturalism means what you know when the poet talks about the ghosts about the devils about the witches about the spirits and all such elements you know then that poetry becomes supernatural poetry and coleridge who was it is believed he was addicted of taking opium okay opium is an intox intoxicating thing you know in that particular uh, uh, in the state of mental state of intoxication in the mental of um, state of half sleep and half awake coleridge has written most of his poems and that is why his poetry is full of mysticism poetry is full of supernaturalism you know but the pro- but but the interesting thing to note about coleridge supernaturalism is that he does not create the atmosphere of terror in his poetry because sometimes it so happens when the author talks about the ghost and witches in literature the people are afraid of uh, reading such thing they are scared of these things right uh, the feeling of terror is created in literature but in case of college the situation is different in fact his supernaturalism is very uh, suggestive and meaningful psychological and refined okay his supernaturalism is not crude not terrific and not sensational he doesn't want to create some sensational situations in his poetry instead you know we feel intimacy with the poet when we read his poetry he has given the touch of realism to all his super supernatural uh, elements which are presented in cristobal kubla khan rome and uh, and all other poems right in cristobal an evil spirit haunts okay haunts the body of geraldine and tries geraldine is the character presented in cristobal it the 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 evil spirit haunts the body of geraldine and tries the tries to ruin the happiness of this 
innocent christabel so in rome also the poetry the title is r o a m in this poem also we move in a world of dreams okay and this has been done successfully in all his poems by uh, astricolis another important element that we must not hear is his medievalism means he is fond of creating medieval atmosphere means he goes back to past middle ages okay 11th 12th 13th century so he goes pa- goes back to past and he creates those scenes of the castles of the feudal lord of the ancient superstitions are also uh, presented in his poems uh, most of the times okay humanitarianism is also another important element that we see in astic coleridge poetry okay just like wordsworth coleridge is marked with a knot of humanitarianism f r lucas an important critic of english literature he has rightly observed that but is ancient mariner that invaluable example of ego ego egoism egotistic self praise is it not on the contrary a sermon against egotism okay so indeed we can say that his poetry ancient mariner is full of the values of charity and humanity okay it is one of the most truly moral poems of english literature uh, the ancient mariner his spirit of humanity is also expressed in his other poems like odd to france and reflections where you know he he leaves his village it is it is presented in his poetry that coleridge leaves his village and goes to the urban area to the town life and he goes there why he goes there to serve the needy people to provide the relief to the victims of french revolution friends we remember that during french revolution there were hundreds and thousands of people who became who were innocent and who became the victim of the violence which we saw during the french revolution so college has shown charity and social service in his poetry that's why we can say that his poetry is full of humanitarianism another important quality in his poetry is the element of music and melody in fact you know coleridge is one of the most melodious poet of english literature h d trail and in- a-, a-, a critic of english literature has rightly said that his melody never fails okay when he uses melody his poetry never fails and coleridge is always a singer as wordsworth is not and byron almost never so here at the trail has compared coleridge with wordsworth and byron as far as the use of melody is concerned and he wants to establish the fact that coleridge is a greater poet as far as the use of melody is concerned you you examine any poetry written by coleridge kubla khan the sai youth and age even rhyme of the ancient mariner everywhere you know you find some beautiful sound patterns you know which lull the reader to uh, to produce the hypnotic effect in fact you know when we read such lines beautiful melodious lines we are easily transported into the imaginative world of astic college you can read this lines water water everywhere and all the bars it shrink water water everywhere no any drop to drink you know there is kind of rhythm you know stress and stress stress and stress this pattern this rhythm goes on in his poem and that makes him a great poet moreover the last important point that we must also not hear is his treatment of nature friends remember coleridge was a lover of nature as wordsworth was 
as Wordsworth was uh, the lover of nature, right? He had great faith in nature and also in God and divine power. Like Wordsworth, Coleridge is known as a pantheist, one who believes in God. In his early poems, we notice the presence of divine nature in his uh, in in his most of his early poems. Uh, Ode to dejection. He presents in this poem. He presents nature as the mother giver. You mark these lines. I have taken these lines from Ode to dejection. He says, "O oh lady, lady means his is addressing nature. O oh lady." O oh, nature, we receive but what we give. Okay, he says that we receive everything from nature, but what do we give? We give nothing to nature, and in our life alone does nature live. Nature lives in our life. Ours is her wedding garment, and ours her shroud. Wedding garment means happiness. In the days of happiness, nature is there with us. in the day and shroud shroud means the last days the death of man okay and in the in the uh, in the days of sorrow also nature is with us so nature is a good companion of mankind that idea has been presented by college this proves that college has deep love for nature so friends here we come to the end of this discussion and at the end let me quote this critic a c swinburne he says that as a poet his place is undisputable i mean he wants to say that you cannot debate you cannot dispute on the Uh, on the idea whether Coleridge was a great poet or not, it is an undisputable thing. It is high among the highest of all times. You know, according to Swinburne, Coleridge's place is very high in English literature for height and perfection of imaginative quality. As far as use of imaginative power is concerned, he is. the greatest of lyric poets okay this was his special power and this was his special praise this is how we come to the end of this discussion friends if you have any doubts or questions do write to me in the comment section of this channel if you really liked the video please share it among your friends and classmates thank you thank you very much